Seven minutes after nine o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Wednesday morning. Great looking morning. I want to tell you a little story. Um, I've probably said this before. Um, I worked for a while when I was younger at the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. And for those who don't know what that is, that's a, a large venue. You know, concerts are held there. Basketball games are there. Uh, there's a hockey team. Uh, the, the New York Islanders, actually, that's their home base. At least it was back then. I don't keep up with sports, so I don't know if they're still there. I think they are. Uh, there was also ice shows. And I want to tell you about one of the ice shows. Now, I worked there. My job there, I, I wasn't in any kind have an office position. I was one of the cleanup guys. I was one of the guys that pushed the broom or put the kitty litter on the vomit when in concerts. <laughs> you know, I had I had the lowest level job that there was there, okay? <laughs> now, what was cool about the job is that I kind of got to go backstage. So I rubbed elbows with Eric Clapton and, you know, and James Taylor and that this so it gives you an idea of when this was. Okay, so the the um the touring ice show called Holiday on Ice I love that was show. there. Now, I was a young man, and Holiday on Ice was filled with young women. So it was a great opportunity for me. <laughs> okay. Now, I remember watching um, them practice, and sometimes during a break from, you know, sweeping and cleaning and everything, I'd sit in the highest seat and, and look down and watch them. Mm-hmm. It was kind of place. It was the place I would go to have my lunch or whatever. And... Um, there was a star of the show. Her name was Peggy Fleming. Am I saying the name yes. right? Is that who was the star? Okay. Yeah. Peggy, Peggy Fleming, probably a famous name to many of you. But that day or that week or whatever it was, she was ill or she hurt her ankle or for some reason she could not perform. Now, I'm sitting up there as high as I could possibly sit. And one of the other workers is sitting next to me eating his lunch too. Now, we're watching them practice and we're watching the substitute ice skater Filling in for Peggy Lee. Filming. Peggy Fleming. Thank you. Peggy Fleming. Okay. Filling in for Peggy Fleming. And from as far away as I was, I could see that girl's smile. And I said to the guy next to me, look at that smile. She is so happy. Mm-hmm. I felt so good for her. She, this is her opportunity, right? And the guy said to me, you'd be happy too if you just got the break of your life. And I said to him, you know what? I've seen her. I've seen her walking around here. I've been, you know, keeping up with these girls. Yeah. (laughs) That girl always has a great smile. So I don't think she has the smile because of the job. I think she got the job because of the smile. Yeah. That's what I wanted to start this interview with because I love this topic. I have not seen the movie, The Gratitude Experiment, but I can't wait to see it. Rich was telling us. Rich is the publicist who Mm -hmm. uh, booked uh, our next guest. He is Douglas Vermeeren. He is an award-winning movie producer and director and a New York Times best-selling author. He's going to tell us about the movie, The Gratitude Experiment. And uh, it sounds like it's a film that uh, does an exploration uh, or an interviews with people who've been successful mm-hmm. and perhaps have that same story. You know, they're not happy. They're not grateful because they're successful. In fact, in fact it's the exact opposite. They became successful because they were grateful. Uh, Douglas Vermeer, and I love this topic. Good morning. It's an honor to be able to speak to you. Thanks for having me. It's good to be with you guys. Where are you? Where are you calling from? I'm actually calling you right now from Canada. From Canada? Wow. All right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada today. All right. Wow. Well, thank you for getting up early and being on the show with us today. Yeah. I, oh, happy to be with you. I love this topic, but I'm so glad that... And I've kind of had the, like this unprovable theory about what it seems like you've proven. Is, is, <laughs> is that right? Am I right about that? Well, it, it's definitely true. And you know what's funny is even beyond the film, kind of what I'm known for in personal development circles is, is having conducted interviews with more than 400 of the world's top achievers, kind of what Napoleon Hill did when he wrote Think and Grow Rich. Oh, right. And yeah. gratitude is certainly a fundamental principle of success. Definitely it is. And is the, were there secrets to people being grateful? Uh, and did you find them from all walks of life? Did you find the rich kid who was grateful as well as the poor kid? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, a lot of gratitude, what we found, didn't just have to do with being grateful for the things that a person had. It was also a matter of being grateful for the situations that they were in, regardless of what the situation was. Oh, see, I and, love that. Um, yeah, and, and you know, it, it was interesting. The minute that somebody shifts from taking things for granted to taking things for gifts is the minute that really they can start expanding on those gifts and building on them to create more. 
And so that was that was really a, a key element that we found in our studies of gratitude. Now, I, I, I think we sometimes get the impression, maybe because of Hollywood, that people who are, you know, sitting in the highest office of a corporation is somehow an evil person. Somehow, <laughs> right? But, the, but you looked into this, and what did you find? Well, the interesting thing is, is it's, it's often not an individual that creates success. It's a mastermind of people. And so the first thing that a person really needs to create amazing success is really to be able to have good people skills and, you know, the ability to interact with others and have people, you know, share that common vision of really where the group or the company is going. And, you know, of course, appreciation and gratitude go very, very hand in hand with building good relationships with others. So uh, that was one of the big things that we found. It's kind of like, you know, someone who's climbed Mount Everest. No one has ever done it by themselves without a team. That's mm -hmm. true. You're going to accomplish true. something major in your life. Yeah, you have to have a team behind you. You know when you're a kid and you do something wrong and somebody says, and an adult says, you, you, now you apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. And, the, and, then, the, and then the parent and the adult goes, no, you didn't mean it. <laughs> now say it like you mean it. So do, do we learn how to be grateful by first verbalizing it and then f figuring out that, oh, my gosh, I, I just said, well, thank you. I'm happy about this. Okay. And then you realize, well, I'm not really feeling it. I'm not really meaning it. How do we teach ourselves to be grateful if we're not? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. I think gratitude is something that, you know, it's kind of like almost turning on a dimmer switch on a light. It's not something either you have it or you don't. It's something that grows by degrees. Oh, I like that. And I think that, yeah, and, it, and it's certainly not one of these things that just comes by verbalizing it or making a list. I think it's something that really comes by a realization. And little by little, we realize really what we have going for us. In fact, it's interesting, lately they've had me talking a lot on, on the news about um, gratitude and tragedy, like the tornadoes in Oklahoma. And in my city, there's a lot of flooding that's going on. And so, you know, how do you even find gratitude in these tragic situations? And it really becomes, first of all, I think, with awareness of, of what's working. And not just a list of what you have, but really even just the little things, right? It's, it's just an awareness that begins the whole process. Yeah, well, and, and it might come from people. I, I think one of the things we have in today's world is communication that is instant. So if you have a flood mm. or an earthquake or, or any you know community disaster, like a tornado, instantly the rest of the world knows about it and probably just as instantly the world is stepping up to the plate and trying to help so well yeah and, and that, that's the amazing thing that we found in all of these disasters definitely there there's there's blessings in everything that we experience and um, in these tragedies we really begin to see the strength of the human spirit and also how unified people really are like when when we experience tragedies and disasters that's when we really as as human beings show our shining moments. That's when we really can, you know, our tenacity comes in and our perseverance, but also our caring for one another. And it can be amazing. And uh, this also boils down to the family because there is a family unit with parents and, and grandparents and then little children. And the uh, uh, parents make sure the little children go to the grandparents and everything growing up. You all have this interaction and then all of a sudden the, the uh, children grow up and they might move away or, or something like that. But they have to stay in touch with the parents and the grandparents. They have to make that telephone call. They have to, you know, come back every once in a while. And that weekly telephone call means the world to the people that are here. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And you know what's interesting is um, one of our speakers in the film uh, shared something interesting. They, they talked about if you had only 24 hours to live, what would you do? And it really always comes down to two things. The words, thank you, and I love you. And they're shared with the people that are most oh, important wow. to us. And, and, and aside from whatever accomplishments that we may have in life, and, and I'm not discounting those because there's some amazing things that people are doing, but no matter what a person has done in life, it always comes back to those two things, thank you and I love you, and it's always with those that matter most to us throughout our life. And so it's, that's important to remember, too, is that, you know, everything that we're doing in life is ultimately leading to that legacy of, you know, how are we going to be remembered and, and what are we going to create, right? Douglas, so, you, Douglas you have a, a tone in your voice that is very positive. I, you, I'm, guessing, oh, thank you. I'm guessing that there must have been something in you at one point that said, I got to share this with the world. I've, I've, I'm hitting on something here, lying in bed, looking at the ceiling. I've got to figure out a way. I've got to figure out a way using my talents, using my skills as an author and as a movie maker. 
I got to figure out a way to get this out there. So that's exactly how it happens. So, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so okay, so I'm wrong. So what happened? How did this happen for you? How did you, did you decide to make a movie like this? Well, you know what? This is actually my second movie. Uh, my first movie was called The Opus. And um, in that movie, it came out just after The Secret. And in both movies, in fact, I have many of the cast from The Secret who've returned and other personal development leaders. But um, our first movie focused on how to take the vision of what you want to create in your life and turn it into a workable plan and ultimately performance in your life. And it also was exciting for us. And I, I think for me, the whole journey of like what I discovered when I interviewed the 400 Top Achievers is that goal setting, achievement, happiness, fulfillment, success, all of these things that we talk about um, often are not achieved in the way that most of the popular gurus and, and the pop culture teach us today. There's a lot more to it than this instant, you know, you can be happy, you can get to your goals, you can do it, rah, rah, rah. And as I interviewed the 400 Top Achievers and I discovered the formula that really works and I began to teach it, I began to see changes in people's lives. And that's where it began to be exciting. And I, I realized that really if I could change people's lives and of course it's very fulfilling even for me to see that and feel that i feel energized when i'm able to make a contribution like that you know when i started to realize the big changes that people were able to make that's when i started sharing it in fact one specific um letter that i got from a father really reminded me of of the power that i guess i now had by learning this and mm. you know i spoke at a, at a college uh, this was probably about four or five years ago and, um, you know, this father sent me a letter saying that in, in the crowd was uh, a young kid that had been forced to be there. <laughs> and, um, oh, wow. you know, he, he'd been through some troubles with, with the legal system and also with some substance. And he'd recently gotten his girlfriend pregnant and he had no job, had nowhere, you know, no sense of income, no sense of self-worth, no sense of direction. And after talking with him, I guess, um, you know, in, in this speech, there were some things that I said that clicked with him. And so, although he was forced to go to this college speech, he was not a student there. Hmm. But based on what I said, he decided to make some changes in his life, became a student, started getting help for some of his challenges. And within a year later, he, he sort of had some direction now that, you know, where he wanted to go and what he wanted to do. And to me, that was an amazing change. And that's not just a singular experience. I've seen that time and again for people who decided now what they really want. But more than that, got a hope that they could actually get there. And that's the difference, I think, is that, you know, we all have ideas, like ideas of what we want to do. But the minute that we can start seeing that it's possible and that there's support and there's help and there's actually... A, a program to get there, a system to get there, then all of a sudden, you know, we all get excited, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you have uh, situations in the movie, uh, uh, I'm going to call it like paradoxical gratitude, and what I mean by that is, let's say, a blessing in disguise kind of a thing. There was a, there's a pastor who, well, actually he's a TV guy, but he's a, like a TV mm -hmm. minister or whatever, and down in, in Orlando, and he... Uh, trying to build a, a building, okay? And the eminent domain from the state took away some of his land, which was like, oh, no, no, they can't take away my land. But he looked at it as a positive because they were paying him for it. Yeah, <laughs> of course. So, so, yeah, he, so rather than complaining about it, he was thanking them for doing this. And, and, and I heard him actually being grateful for something that somebody else might have been angry about. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And so there's a, there's like a paradoxical kind of a gratitude. Are there examples of that? Well, in, in the film, certainly there are. Um, and you know what's what's very interesting is is we see a lot of that you know all the time in real life. Um, you know, I think we've got to be careful to assume that the finish line has arrived before it really has. Um, you know, there was something that I was reading on the internet uh, not too long ago. Someone posted a little quote saying that in life there's always a happy ending. If you haven't arrived at the happy ending, you know, you're still alive. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I've seen that too. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and I really do believe that to be true. And I've seen it even in my own experience. In fact, it was really funny. I was speaking last weekend in Dallas and hilarious. I actually am heading back there again this Friday to speak again. But when I got there, I had all my suitcases and materials not arrive like Ooh. i was just there in what i traveled with and you know of course uh i had one of my assistants there trying to track things down and people were starting to get frantic and all that and you know quite frankly you know i just i said hey it is what it is you know that's what it's going to be and so as we we're just about to head out the door and everything else 
well, next thing you know, our materials arrived and, you know, they happened to be there. We just didn't find them. But in the meantime, you know, of course, these airline people had given us all kinds of concessions and help and support and, you know, points for our next trip and all these other things. And so our stuff made it, but we still, you know, got all these perks from the airline. Yeah, so, oh, I could, yeah. Yeah, so, so I think the moral of the story is, and, and it may not have worked that way. In fact, it's funny, I was speaking in Vegas one time and my clothes didn't arrive. I had to buy a suit and use a stapler to hem it on the spot <laughs> and then go on stage. So, I mean, life always finds a way to, to work out. But oftentimes if we get really excited <laughs> before it gets to that, we can, you mm. know, we can get frustrated and you know all of a sudden mm. people's feelings get hurt and and yeah. you know and so that's going going back to my quick. going back to my comment about the the tone of your voice you sound very optimistic uh, but can anybody learn this one one of the thing, when when we you mentioned the secret earlier and I know that's not one of your films but the one issue I had with the secret first of all I th I think it's probably true that if we really focus on things we can attract ourselves to that circumstance or those circumstances to us but I do think the secret in and of itself left out the the spiritual part of life the 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 fact that there's a god and that it's not necessarily always all us uh, yeah. I, I mean obviously uh, I'm not the one who put the sperm and the egg together that made me you know <laughs> you know so there is there's got to be more to me than than just my own ideas um, I guess I guess we could argue that um, but but the point I guess I'm getting at is that when we talk about gratitude, a lot of times it is toward a person who's done something really nice. Sometimes it's to the invisible God that we, you know, we just mm -hmm. say thank you. Sometimes it's to the person who's done us harm. Yeah, it's it's yeah. A, it's an amazing thing. So how do you how do you train people to who don't do this naturally? Well, here's the here's the thing. I think films like The Secret my film, The Opus, and even the Gratitude Experiment, we've got to remember it's a beginning to a conversation. Um, you know, it really is hard to change a person's life in like a 73-minute film. <laughs> right. You know, there's, there's, there's definitely more to it than that. And so I really do think a person needs to, to do some follow-up. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, of course I'm going out and speaking to groups and why we have coaching programs that follow is because change takes time. And change is almost like holding an ice cube in your hand. It's also very uncomfortable. And it requires that you hang on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you've right, got to right. stick in there. And, um, you know, getting started isn't the, isn't the hardest part. It's really sticking with it. That's, that's the hardest part. I think for you're most right. People. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, you know, that's, that's really it. You've got to make a, a decision that you are going to actually start thinking this way and acting this way and making it happen. And you said something also a couple times now. You talked about the optimism in my voice. Yeah. Well, obviously, the way that we perceive things is the way that they will appear. If we decide to look at them with a doom and gloom attitude, that's exactly what we're going to see. And there was a study that was done in Harvard a couple of years ago that talked about our thoughts. And they said that we have roughly about 70,000 thoughts a day. I always want to know who counted that. But, yeah, yeah, really. yeah. but, but, but they say that we have about 70,000 thoughts a day. And they say that 85% of them are either negative or neutral. And you know what? Most people think that there's just positive thinking and negative thinking. But the truth is there's four kinds of thinking. There's negative, there's neutral, there's positive, and there's empowered thinking. And when we look at either negative or, or positive thinking, you know, positive thinking isn't as beneficial as what people have labeled it over the past few years. In fact, positive thinking typically requires a negative situation to respond to. For example, I lost my job. I look on the bright side. I'm going through a divorce. I'm looking on the bright side. We've always got to have something negative to respond to. So it's very reactionary. Right. But when we come from a place of empowered thinking, we actually choose ahead of time how we will respond, how we will react, and we begin to structure our lives and 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 and, and really kind of plan, if you will, to be positive, but not just positive, but to create those situations by, by really just thinking ahead. And I think that that's a big problem for most people is that most people live their lives reactionary. They don't really say, okay, this is where I'm headed. This is what I want to do. And we all know that when a goal is specific and clear, it becomes attainable and near. So we have to really make those decisions ahead of time before we get there, right? And uh, those are such wise words. And when you're an individual or you have a small nucleus of people reaching for the same goal, everybody is everybody else's cheerleader. But when you have a project of the magnitude that your film is, uh, you have got to get others involved. And with all the skepticism 
in the world and 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 just because it's it's human nature how did you get them to trust you to bear their souls so they can help others and be comfortable that they are going to shine in the best light possible yeah that that's a great question well i think my first movie helped to build my credibility in the marketplace um, but more so than that, even with my first movie, I think the key is to, to finding help and support is really just to understand your mission first. As soon as you understand really what it is you're looking to accomplish, you're on, on the road to success. And then, of course, you've got to be able to articulate it and articulate it in such a way that other people are going to gravitate towards that idea and, and stand behind you and support you with that idea. And that takes practice. You know, too often we think as soon as we sort of know what we want to do, um, we're ready to go out and tell the world and make things happen. But I think that there's more to it than that. And preparation, in my opinion, is, is a fundamental key to success. It's just like if you were looking at a professional yeah. athlete. Just, just because a professional athlete wants to play, say, like you were talking about hockey earlier with the Islanders, or right, even right. football or basketball, it's not enough to just show up with your, you know, with your hockey stick in hand and say, I'm ready to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's there's, right. There's, oh, that's really you know, right. It's, it's, yeah. w- one of the successful people that I interviewed um, was a referee in the NFL for probably 30 years, a guy by the name of Jim, T- Jim Tunney. And Jim was telling me that, that one time there was a study done on NFL players, and for every minute that they spent on the field, that they had something like eight or nine hours of practice. And um, I-, I think that's it. You've really got to put in the time that nobody sees. Well, and, the, the, what was it? Um, Pablo Picasso said it this way: that if people knew how many hours I put in, they wouldn't call me a master at all. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> uh, we we can relate to that. Yeah, we can yeah. relate to that. We, pra- yeah. Robin and I do music, and it, yeah, <laughs> we practice endlessly. Uh, you know, to do a thirty-minute show somewhere. So, uh, we yeah, under- you do. Uh, but you know what? It's also not enough to practice. And this is the thing I found when I studied the top achievers: you've got to be practicing the right stuff. That's you know, true it's not, too. like if you've got the wrong pattern and you're doing it again and again and again and again, well, you're going to be very good at the wrong pattern. Yeah, that's exactly. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so yeah. so it's kind of like what uh, what the Chinese philosopher Confucius said. He said, you know, one of the best ways to create success is to imitate. So you find someone who's doing it right, and then do what they're doing, and naturally you innovate. Sure. Yeah, uh, that's kind of what I just. Doug, you know, that's, I know, that's what I discovered with the top 400 achievers is what do they really do to get to success? Right? I really appreciate what you're doing. I'm looking forward to. Is the film online? Is it in the movie theaters? Where? Yeah, is it? we are showing it in selected theaters, but um, a person can view it immediately right now online at thegratitudeexperiment.com, which is the website, thegratitudeexperiment.com. Okay. And you can either download it to your smart device or your phone, or you can watch it, you know, just once or twice. I recommend downloading it. Because it is the kind of film that you're going to want to watch multiple times because the, the truth of the matter is is you're not going to learn how to implement the gratitude at a level to make serious changes on a one-time path. I right? think you're right. Yeah, you I think you're right. Well, that was the way it was with... Uh, I have to wa- watch Opus, too. I'm going to uh, make sure I check that out. Uh, it's actually available on the same site. So you can actually download both right now. And um, they're incredible films. Like, I mean, we've got people like the creators of Chicken Soup for the Soul in there. We've got... You know, one of the previous founders of FedEx and Nike and, uh, you know, like, just all kinds of really incredible people in the film. And the lessons are, are very valuable. Now, here's just one last thought to share with you on the gratitude experiment is that we found that, you know, when a person learns these strategies of gratitude, the things that we teach in the film and incorporates them, they find greater abundance in their life, better relationships, their health improves. Uh, they've got better connections to themselves and self-worth and their spirituality. But really, that abundance and finance thing also grows with wealth, which is crazy. <laughs> how can you make more money by being more grateful? Well, in the film, we're going to show you how, and it's it's just incredible how that works. Uh, Douglas, wow. thank you. It's an honor, and uh, we are grateful that you were on with yes. us today, uh, not just because of the, of the and obviously I have a phone with the name, uh, the gratitude experiment, but also in, in sincerity, because you are uh, are bringing to us something that we can help other people have a better life with, and we're just a vehicle through for that. Uh, Douglas Vermeeren, thank you for being on the air with us. Go to thegratitudeexperiment.com, thegratitudeexperiment.com, and you'll be able to see the film as well as Opus. Uh, thank you, Douglas. Excellent. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. We'll take a break and be right back. We may not have the kind of winters they have up north, but Florida weather can be still pretty rough on your ride. And Ford Lincoln of Ocala wants to save you money and time during their Restore Your Ride service event. Right now, you can drive into Ford Lincoln of Ocala, receive a free brake inspection, and if it's determined you need